In this episode, we will be talking about things weight related, weight gain, weight loss, lifting weights, you get the drill. Now, before we start, I might use a little bit of bad language, so don't listen to this if you're around kids who are under 13. So why should you care about this subject at all and care about my opinion on it? Firstly, I feel like there's lots of fitness influencers and body positivity influencers and nothing in between. Because either it seems like people got shredded and they lived happily ever after, or people accepted themselves as they are and then lived happily ever after. And I know for a fact that there's lots of people in between me included. So I thought we could look at things from that perspective. Secondly, I've been through the entire roller coaster of weight gain, weight loss, fitness fitness this, diet that, the whole drill. So hopefully I've learned something along the way that I can share. Uh, Thirdly, I'm an actor and my body is under scrutiny all the time. The way that I look and um, the way that I appear on screen is a very big part of what kind of roles I get, what kind of roles I'm offered and uh, the kind of work that I do. So it's something that I think about all the time. It's something I'm working on all the time. And so hopefully I've learned a few things along the way and maybe I can I can share it and it'll be useful. Also, I feel like this is something that everybody struggles with. And so maybe my story will make you feel a little less alone. I know especially women struggle with this. Men do too, but I think especially women are judged much more harshly based on their appearance. And um, as someone who is a in a female body and someone who is an actor and someone who struggles with their weight and their body image, um, hopefully my story will make you feel a little less alone. So what is my story? Um, When I was a kid, I was really skinny. I was always tall, but I was really, really skinny. I remember um, apparently my aunt like saw me once and cried because she thought I was malnourished. Like that's how thin I was. And so I didn't pay any attention to my diet or exercise or anything like that because I didn't need to do anything. I ate whatever I wanted. I ate a lot of junk. And I was not like a particularly active kid. Like I wasn't into any sort of athletic activity or sport or anything. I mean, I tried playing basketball because I'm tall, but I was really bad at it. And I did a few, you know, treks and summer camps here and there, but I was never like deliberately active as a child. And I still was thin, so I never really thought about it or never had to think about it. And then I went to college. Oh my God. And I went to college in America. Okay, America is not a good place to be in terms of the availability of junk food and the portion sizes. Oh my goodness. So for four years of college, I stress ate. I stress ate junk food exactly how I stress ate junk food when I was in school, except it actually started making a difference. I think it's it's the kind of food that you get there, the amount that I was eating definitely, and a, a whole mix of things, right? Like a lot of it was stress induced and so on. And so I gained a lot of weight in college. Now the best part was that I was completely oblivious of this weight gain. I I mean, it happened so gradually, right? And it's something I've never thought about. So I was like happily going up in jean sizes. But you know, when you're, when you're a kid and like that kind of growing and changing of clothes is so normal. Like you need to change your shoes every year. You need to change your clothes every other year. Like you grow. And so your clothes also need to grow with you. And so I was in that mindset and I just continued buying bigger and bigger clothes and not realizing that this is not okay in the sense that I was impacting my body with with my lifestyle choices. I just thought I was growing. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'm still growing, it's fine. And then um, one time somebody in, in college who was really close to me called me pleasantly plump and it shook me. I swear to God, that was the first time, I was probably in my third or fourth year. And it was the first time I ever stopped and considered that maybe I'm not skinny anymore. It was this, glass shattering perspective shifting moment for me I was like what do you mean pleasantly plump like I've never been plump in my life like how dare you associate me and the word plump right because it was so alien to me as a concept 
but i was fully in denial i was like whatever you're wrong i'm right i'm just not going to believe this and then several years later maybe it was 2 3 years later my brother made a comment on my weight and my poor brother was a really chubby kid who who lost all of his weight in college and got super ripped and shredded and then now the tables had turned and i was so mean to him when we were kids like i fat shamed the shit out of him and i feel so awful and i've apologized to him a million times if you're listening i'm sorry i was an awful older sister especially when it came to weight so this table turning was again another like massive reality check for me and i think it was it was then finally because i was out of college i was done with college i was working i had access to a gym i had regular work timings not like you know our colleges with timings being all over the place and i was finally like okay i think it's time for me to start doing something about this and my brother was still in town at the time so i was like okay can you at least help me start so because my brother had spent so much time at this point uh, working on himself and his weight loss and his fitness he basically got me started on a bodybuilding program from bodybuilding.com so it was a bit of weights and a bit of cardio it was pretty basic and he taught me how to do some of it with dumbbells in my basement gym uh, in my apartment and he was like okay just do this for a while and see what happens and i did and i noticed a few changes but like it wasn't anything magnificent but after that i was like okay fine i'm going to really commit to this and i found like a buddy from work and we would work out together after work we stayed at the gym we kept finding like more and more challenging programs for us to do and there was one point when we were working out like 2 hours a day uh like 4 5 times a week it was exhausting and the problem was that i wasn't seeing the results at all like i mean maybe it was marginal but for the amount of time i thought i was putting in and the effort i was putting in it just wasn't working for me at all and i remember having this massive meltdown on the way back from the from the gym one day i just started crying to my friend and i was like i can't do this anymore like i just i can't i can't do this two and a half hours every day five days a week and nothing's happening right i mean of course i was like trying to track my calories on my fitness pal and like all of this stuff but it just wasn't working and i can't remember what i did in the gap between that breakdown and the next phase but the next phase was a game changer i was introduced to powerlifting by my boyfriend at the time god bless him seriously powerlifting is one of the best things that's ever happened to me now powerlifting is just a style of weightlifting right it's bodybuilding works on specific body parts right you you'll break up your workouts into like chest shoulders and triceps on one day you'll do back and biceps another day you'll do legs and abs another day but with powerlifting all of it is like combined movements so you'll do primarily squats deadlifts and bench press and other small supporting exercises to go along with that but your primary three are just these three and all three of them work out your entire body they're the most effective compound movements basically so i was introduced to strong lifts 5 by 5 okay which is the simplest <laughs> workout ever there's only two kinds of workouts workout a and workout b okay workout a is squat bench press barbell rows workout b is squat overhead press deadlift that's it and you alternate you do a b a b and you only do three times a week and the goal is to progress with the amount of weight that you're lifting and that's it that's it it's just oh my god so you just do five repetitions and five sets of three exercises so it's like the simplest thing ever especially compared to that two and a half hour rubbish that i was doing before not getting any results so this person that i was dating who introduced me to this program got me started in terms of like the form and how to how to do things correctly and and basically worked out with me for quite a while as i was getting familiar with this program and i made crazy progress in terms of the amount of weight that i was lifting of course everyone hits a plateau but those initial days oh my god i have never felt so good about myself in my life than when i was doing that workout i can't even begin to explain it i felt so strong i felt so powerful i felt like i could achieve anything like you know when people talk about how fitness changed their life etc etc like fitness did not change my life 
with strong lifts five by five and this ex-boyfriend of mine definitely changed my life it was the most fulfilling thing i've ever done and somehow simultaneously as i got introduced to this i started doing a low carb diet which a couple of my friends from work were doing so we would do like this lunch potluck where it would be two non veg items and one veg item and we would just mix it in a bowl and eat it so that way each person makes only one thing but when you get to lunch at work you have three things to eat so we would rotate the veg and non veg and whatever and there were like three four of us who used to pull in like whatever we cooked we gave up like rice and bread basically primarily i mean rice and bread are the biggest things that you cut out but you of course don't have junk food and stuff and i also didn't drink alcohol at that at that point of time like i was doing this for about 3 months i must have lost like around 10 kg i don't remember exactly how much it was now but i i lost most of the weight and because it happened in such a short amount of time people really noticed it and i got a lot of compliments and whatever and it was really fulfilling but i will say that it was fueled by a lot of self hatred because you have to slash your entire social life right you have to say no to everything if you go out i wasn't drinking so that would take a lot of self control basically every time i had to tell myself not to eat something i had to like berate myself and feel bad about myself for a certain amount of time and say like you don't deserve to eat this you don't deserve to drink this you don't deserve to rest today and i would have to like belittle myself to the point of being disciplined you know so it was really it was a really bad way of motivating myself and though i got the results that i wanted it was it was really hard on my self esteem and while i did go back to you know what i used to look like maybe not when i was in school but like in, i was in much better shape physically emotionally mentally i really wasn't because i had spent so much time beating myself up eventually i sort of drifted into more of a maintenance mode where i wasn't so strict about my diet um i would you know give myself a couple of days off every now and then i would allow myself some rest uh, between workouts and i wouldn't push myself to do it you know every other day and so on and i i was maintaining it without a lot of difficulty and so like lots of work was coming my way it was great i had no issues um i actually felt quite good about how my body was looking at the time and then i got offered a film um it was going to be like a main cast role and you know it was a big opportunity and they asked me to gain weight they said that i needed to look less athletic and more relatably chubby desk job kind of girl and i thought i was one big amir khan <laughs> christopher nolan no not nolan dude he's a director what's the batman guy christian bale <laughs> i thought i was like one christian bale slash amir khan and that i could yeah whatever like gain a bunch of weight lose a bunch of weight like what is the big deal right um i gained the weight surprisingly easily i literally just ate biryani three times a week and ate a bunch of dessert and in a matter of weeks i had undone years of struggle <sighs> and you take a deep breath okay so i finished shooting the film and i started working on losing the weight because the film that i got after that required me to look athletic again now i didn't go back to my pre film weight but i did lose some of it and i shot the film and it was fine and then i was like okay cool now let's let's lose the weight properly and then i traveled to america for a month and i ate whatever the hell i wanted because i was you know on holiday came back and i gained a bunch of weight the month after that i had shoulder surgery for a recurring injury and i was out of commission for months so i was sitting on my ass basically eating and doing nothing because i couldn't do anything and i continued gaining a bunch of weight so as soon as i got done with my basic physiotherapy i very enthusiastically signed up with a with an online trainer and i was determined this time to lose the weight okay so i 
I mean, clearly I had tried to do it on my own and it wasn't working. So I thought maybe getting a trainer would solve the problem. I was given a plan, like a nutrition plan, a fitness plan, and I had to weigh myself every day and take pictures every week and take pictures of every meal and every snack that I had and, you know, keep them updated on all this. Except I didn't lose any weight. I mean, okay, fine, my stamina increased. I got some muscle definition back. So in a way, I did make progress. But on the scale, nothing changed. And I really tried. I followed the plan and nothing happened. But what ended up happening, because I wasn't seeing any results, is that I started having these panic attacks. Because I had to go back to that dark place where I had to make myself feel horrible in order to stay disciplined and deny myself food and force myself to work out. And, you know, I I somehow stuck to it for the 12 weeks and I completed the program, but I just had to stop after that. I took a step back. I was working out on my own pace and I was, you know, a little bit less strict with the diet. And slowly over six months, I did start to notice some changes. I mean, again, the scale didn't move, but I was looking better. I was feeling better. And I thought, okay, fine. Things are back on track now. And then I lost my cousin. It was very sudden. It was very untimely because he wasn't old or sick or anything. And it was really hard on my entire family. And it just put me back into that stress eating zone that I was in in college. So I just drank a lot of beer and I ate a lot of junk food and ordered a lot of desserts. And I just buried my feelings in food for a couple of months actually. And then obviously I gained weight and I worked with my psychiatrist and I finally got back on track a bit, um, resumed my workouts and you know, controlling my eating. Um, And it's been two months of that. So I would say I'm back on track right now. I'm still doing things on my own, at my own pace. As of today, I'm 77 kgs. I'm five feet, nine inches tall to give you context. And according to all the charts and the measurements and the guidelines, I'm two kgs overweight. According to some scales, I'm also obese, but a lot of these definitions of normal bodies were made based on white men. So I don't know how applicable it is, but that's a whole other episode. I don't know if I'm ever going to get back to my pre-film weight of 60 kgs. I'm 30 years old now. I need to understand that my metabolism is not what it used to be. It is probably never going to be. But I just don't want to go back to skipping meals and crying all the time and having panic attacks just for the sake of being thin. Especially after I lost my cousin, it just put so many things into perspective for me in terms of what's important and what's worth fighting for and what isn't. So now I'm trying to focus on body acceptance. Now, I know there's a lot of misconceptions about body acceptance and body positivity and people claim that it's promoting obesity. It's not. It's just an understanding that your body is going to change over time. And it's an idea that the weighing scale or measuring tape is not the only way to measure health, right? Like increasing your stamina, gaining muscle definition, trying a new kind of workout, being consistent, coming back again and again and again after injuries and surgeries and life events. All of those things are just as worthwhile and just as much of a measure of progress as what your weighing scale says. And honestly, in terms of my mental health, when I was 60 kgs, I was happy with my body, but I was a shit show. I was on a bunch of psychiatric medication and emotionally, I was all over the place. I might be at my heaviest today, but I'm also at my happiest and most stable. Like I'm really, I'm noticing and realizing for the first time that I am a person that is more than size small or size medium or size six or size eight. You know, with all the ups and downs, I kept going and I'm back on track now. I work out five days a week. I eat clean five days a week. My skin is clear. My period cycle is regular. My mental health is stable. I mean, overall, my life is pretty good and I don't want to give that up again just so the weighing scale says 60 kgs. But it's not all rosy. I'm not going to lie. I haven't figured everything out. My acting work has definitely been impacted by this weight gain. I 
feel like I get fewer opportunities now and I'm slotted for different kinds of roles. But I'm still getting work. I've worked with some cool directors. I've worked with some great brands. And I'm just hoping that that'll continue. That people will cast me for my experience and my <laughs> skill rather than for my measurements. And yeah, okay, fine. I won't be the next Amir Khan or the next Christian Bale. But maybe, hopefully, I'll be the next Radna Patek Shah or Shifali Shah. And that's just as much of an accomplishment. So... I know this is sounding like I've got everything figured out, but basically all I'm doing is I'm just focusing on daily choices, just on today. Choosing to work out instead of not working out. Choosing to eat yogurt instead of ice cream. Or choosing to eat carrots instead of chips. And whatever the weighing scale is gonna be, it's gonna be. I'm not setting any more goals. I'm not putting a finish line anymore. No deadlines. Just hoping to have more good days than bad days. So if you're on a similar journey or if you're looking for a place to start, I've added links to all the resources I mentioned in this episode in the description. There's obviously tons more resources than that list. And if you can afford it, a trainer and a nutritionist can really, really help. But if you're prone to anxiety or disordered eating or you think you might have an eating disorder, you need to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I know that's true for me for sure because I needed to talk to my therapist more than I needed to talk to my trainer. Hopefully this episode and some of these resources will help you. You can reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, I'm not an expert, but I can tell you about my experience. You can reach out to me at Take It Easy Policy on Instagram. So just message me there. I'm most responsive on Instagram. As always, music and mastering by the lovely Semitonic Productions. And that's it for today. Over and out. Until next time. Bye.